Welcome to the International Training Center, ITC, in San Diego, California. I am Henry Mooney, director of the ITC, accompanied by a very distinguished author and international business consultant, Dr. Dennis Briscoe, who is here to briefly discuss with us a very important issue and challenge that all organizations are facing today. Thank you, Henry. I'm delighted to be here. I want to talk today about the fact that everything in the world around us has changed. And because of that, we have to learn to thrive on the resulting chaos. Nothing is predictable. We're confronted by constant disruption and everyone is affected. That is, there's no escape from the effects. Whether you are in education, business, government or civil society, you're exposed and affected. This is what I want to talk about today. Okay, can you elaborate on this? In many industries, it truly is the end of the world as they know it. Whether it is rapid advancing technology, the new shared economy, or another trend still in the making, things are changing at a dizzying pace. And the general consensus is that one can either try to anticipate and benefit from the changes and develop effective organizational transformations, or ignore them and end up on the sidelines. To reinforce the point, McKinsey and Company reported during the winter 2019 World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, based on their worldwide consulting practice, that the resulting constant disruption is intensifying, that the gulf between those embracing change and those following behind is growing, and that pretty much everywhere, countries and economies are moving toward greater diversity, yet also to greater inclusivity. Can you give us an example of a new disruptive technology? One innovation example can illustrate the point, the rapid introduction and development of autonomous vehicles. This fast developing technology can shrink thousands of businesses further downstream across multiple industries. The cascading implications are profound, affecting such as insurance companies, personal injury lawyers, and even radio stations who could find their markets drying up because people will be able to work in their cars and won't be listening to the talk shows. And this sort of cascading impact is happening in almost every industry and every business and type of organization. Why is this constant disruption happening all over the world? There are many reasons for this constant disruption. All the rules and standard ways of thinking that we have been taught and have grown up with seem to no longer apply. One of the major forces for change that seems normal, it impacts pretty much every economy in the world, but is not well understood, is the impact of movement from one technological era to another. As one technology gives way to a new technology, the workforce must adapt in mass to new occupations. So the question always arises as to if all the jobs from technology A disappear because new technology displaces them, then what will people do? Well, always there has been a new B technology that replaces the prior A technology. This movement from one era, for example, agriculture, to the next, for example, manufacturing and industrial, can take a long time. But in recent years, such movement from one era to another for example, more recently, from service jobs to information technology to health and leisure jobs has happened relatively quickly and has happened in most countries. For example, in the US, 150 years ago, 85% of the labor force was employed in agricultural jobs. 100 years ago, only 50 years later, approximately 30 to 45% of the workforce worked in manufacturing industrial and extraction jobs. 25 years ago, 50 to 75% of the labor force worked in service jobs. And in developed economies today, 85% work in IT, knowledge jobs, healthcare, and leisure jobs. Everywhere today, only a small percentage of the workforce is employed in agricultural jobs. And in the US today, fewer than 1% of the labor force work in agriculture, and shrinking numbers are employed in manufacturing and industrial jobs, 
while the largest number of jobs were located in service work. And yet, even here, the number of traditional service jobs has been declining since 1956. The number of information sector jobs, IT, etc., have been dominant since 1976, but that era has not lasted very long. Now, leisure jobs and healthcare have become dominant, true since 2015, only four years ago. The point is that even though with each major shift in the nature of work, when people worry about how the workforce will adjust, somehow it does. Even so, the media and politicians complain about the changes and worry about how the economies and people can survive. For example, the media and politicians complain about how to save agriculture and manufacturing, that yet there remain only a small percentage of the workforce employed in these sectors. It's not that we don't produce any food or manufacture any goods. Indeed, we grow more food and produce more products than ever. It all has to do with application of new technology to work productivity and product design, education, training, and entrepreneurship to form new businesses to meet new opportunities, fill the void. For example, let's take a look at the kind of company that is IBM. They produce computers and many other forms of technology. Most of us would judge IBM to be a manufacturer, yet only 7% of their workforce is employed in manufacturing. The rest work in data service. Even these numbers are shrinking rapidly as technology such as AI is applied to the existing data requirements. These data jobs include MIS, quality, sales, HR, accounting, product development, customer service, IT, procurement, etc. Many of the forces for change and disruption include the global rise of entrepreneurship, globalization, and the technological and communication revolution, changing demographics, aging populations and growing diversity, deregulation, privatization, free trade, and desire for smaller government and populist governments, no sources of wealth and income, rise of entrepreneurship, rise of developing economies and global surprises, for example, unexpected natural disasters, increasingly capable global connections, and global warming. So what should organizations and their executives do to meet this challenge? To cope with the chaos of disruption that stems from all these forces for change, executives and their organizations have to develop an, an agility to both recognize when disruptive change is occurring and options for reacting. To build and lead agile organizations, leaders must make shifts to foster a culture of innovation, collaboration, and creativity. Collaboration requires employment of networks of autonomous teams, underlain by a creative mindset of partnership and management by agreement based on freedom, trust, and accountability. And creativity requires continuous and rapid evolution to a mindset of abundant potential and unlimited resources available to the organization, enabling customer centricity, entrepreneurship, inclusion, and co-creation. Thank you, Dr. Briscoe, for your invaluable insights and proposals on this important topic. Your call for action is timely and necessary. The mission of the ITC is to share global knowledge for a better and more productive world. And this interview contributes directly to this spirit. For more information on the ITC, its programs, and activities, please visit the ITC portal or contact ITC directly. Thank you all for your participation and see you soon. Mm -hmm.